What is good? We're back. Still rocking with our man, Robbie. How you doing, Robbie? Oh, a little fresh yeah. crack. We got a fresh crack oh, oh. over there. A lot of backsplash. A lot. It's it's a pool over here. Ooh. Oh my gosh. All right. All right. Got excited. That beat <laughs> dropped and. Well, it was, it was, you know, it's the first time you, you hear the cracks, you know, through the years and the, the guys are doing, they're giving them the ranks. And then that was, we're not ranking that one, but you know, you get excited for the first one it's on, on the pod. So I had to, I had to do it big. That's, that's what I like to hear. Jay Wayne, how you doing tonight? Doing fantastic. Always love when we talk running backs. I mean, pay them, pay the running backs. How could you not run the damn ball? That's, that's not, that's, that's what we're about here. That's what's working for the Patriots right now. Just doing everything know? the analytics say not to do. I love it. <laughs> Throw it less than three times and you can win. <laughs> Who knew? Amazing. Get Ramondre Amazing. Stevenson. <laughs> yeah. Um, we just talked a little older running back action. The, the 26, 27, 28 year old bunch here. Now we're going to kind of flip flop the discussion here. And we're going to jump into the younger discussion of running backs and kind of where you would take them, um, you know, putting a putting a bow, like Robbie just said, on these older guys. Like, which we, look, we just did. A, if you're watching on YouTube, we just did a video on the older dudes. Go check right. that out. I'll throw a link up to that. We're, we're looking at all these ADPs of these older guys right now, and they're all you know seven, thirteen, seventeen, nineteen, twenty-one. So all in the second round still, or first or second round for all these older running backs. And by the time we hit mid-off season, there isn't. A, I don't think there's very much chance that very many of these guys, maybe an Austin Eckler or Alvin Kamara, stay up there because of how they finish, or somebody has a great finish. But I think this whole thing is going to you know flip flop on its head. Dynasty is always going to gear towards youth, regardless, especially at the running back position. Um, there's not too many that hang on uh, to a heavy ADP um, as they age. So you think for the most part, maybe drop off the, the lower ADP guys on this list, but everybody in those columns to the right are going to jump over everybody in the right. columns and, to the left, save for a couple minutes. And if you're listening on the podcast, like we said, it's Dalvin, Kamara, Eckler, Aaron Jones, Zeke, and Henry, who are kind of we're considering the older bunch right now. And, you know, we don't exactly know what CMC is going to do, but, you know, Chubb and Mixon's having a nice uh, season right here. Uh, Saquon Barkley going to get healthy and probably, you know, jump, jump some of these guys in ADP uh, you have Najee and you know obviously JT's up at the top and Gibson's having a nice little backstretch after he's healthy and ETN's going to get healthy Akers is going to get healthy um, CEH maybe has a nice season at the back end and I just feel like all this youth is going to then jump over top of these older running backs that we just discussed uh, that we're currently in a position of being higher than most of the guys that I just mentioned um, so Really, for the rest of this discussion on the younger running backs, we kind of just wanted to see where some of these younger guys, where we think they might end up, and if you're willing, where you're willing to kind of take them at. Um, so, the first one that I want to start with is the guy who just had his his own uh, his spotlight, and Melvin Gordon was finally out, and and the people finally got what they wanted, um, and he he didn't disappoint. Uh, maybe he disappointed some, but he didn't disappoint me. I liked everything that I saw from Javante Williams. Um, so he's got a little Michael Myers picture on his thigh pad. That's <laughs> scary. Um, so let's we, we kind of did an ADP show last week. He was coming in at 24 right now uh, in DLF's November ADP. And they're always kind of like a few weeks behind of what's going on for obvious reasons of how you would collect ADP. Um which is a, like six different drafts by different people that they find on Dynasty Twitter to do these ADP drafts. So JT's obviously right now the number one running back. We you, Javante's not supplanting JT. Um, and then Najee and Swift come in kind of as the second two. Is you taking Javante over either one of those guys? No, I, I don't think I am. And... <laughs> you're right. It, it is wild right now. The, the, the it, it, what basically what's happened right now on dynasty Twitter, right? You, you see the, the arguing against no one. I don't know if you guys have seen that before where everyone's saying, Oh, the doubters, the people who, right, who hated right, right, Javante right. Williams, uh, 
you know, and they're showing these their stats and all this. And it's like, guys, I don't think anyone disliked Javante. Like for, from all the people that I follow and, and go along with, they had him one, two or three, right? They had him right there with Etienne, right there with Najee. Some people even had him one uh, above right. the other two just based on age, right? Because you see he – I think you showed the the graphic for the YouTube side. He's in that 21, 22 age bracket all by himself. He's younger than Najee, who you look uh, to the left, right? He's in the, the older age bracket or kind of that mid – age bracket but old for a rookie so i think people see that age 21 they see melvin gordon one foot out the door they see a team that runs the ball 30 times a game and, and they're getting excited and, and, and they should be it, it is exciting but all that said i think i think we do know kind of like we said in the previous video about kamara and about eckler deandre swift has some of that and i think he's honestly maybe even a better runner than those two of the football and so that's why i get excited uh, about Swift in particular, so yeah, and I like I'm that O line. I like that O line. Um, yes, yes. Maybe it's not so, great at where it needs where it's going to end up right now, but I like the inner workings of where that O line can be, and I and I think the the mentality of that coach in Detroit, uh, Dan Campbell, is going to you know be a guy who leans you know on on the running back being heavy in heavy rotation, and, and Swift is a guy who has has. When when healthy, has shown that he can be very 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 useful in your fantasy. even dinged up. In your fantasy yep. lineup, there. Okay, so uh, J- Jason, you uh, how, how, where are you at there? Is he Javante? Has the Javante hype jumped over those guys? Over who? Well, I, what was JT the Swift question? or Najee? I mean, not not JT for sure. Not JT. I mean, JT over everybody. What well, what are you doing if you don't take JT first? That would be my personal uh, opinion. And uh, I would be excited to not have to, if I could had two or three out and get JT in a startup, that would be fantastic. Um, if you, you know, I, I'm probably leaning Swift over Javante. I think uh, Swift just, he's more electric, I guess. I don't know. Maybe that's silly. I, I wouldn't be mad if you, if you wanted to take Javante over Swift or Najee, really. I think I would have him after those three guys. I think I would. Maybe put Javante. I don't know if I put him at number four overall just yet. There's there's another guy I might like a little more than Javante, but I, th- I think I think general consensus is gonna is I feel like they're bursting eager eager to 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 dump Najee down the premature and put, and put Javante up there. It just seems like for it's whatever a lot of reason, at, like you said on on Dynasty Twitter or whatever, like everybody just for whatever reason just seems to really hate on Najee Harris because he doesn't you know isn't fitting into some of the the metrics that they that they like to see uh I guess running backs be in and and I just I just don't understand it like well, he's, he's producing it old. he's producing at a high clip and he looks he looks pretty solid to me with a really bad offensive line and, and there is some uh you know we don't really know what's going to end up happening in Pittsburgh, but I feel confident about the situation. So I, f- I feel like he's going to end up being, and by the time things are all said and done, I feel like he's going to end up being the RB two or three next year. I feel like uh, Melvin's, like you said, Melvin's going to be gone, and Javon. Everyone's just going. He's just going to be like, boom, here's Javante. Like he, he. When you watch him on tape, he is. He does look like he's sort of bursting at the seams. He, he's hard to tackle. He's elusive. He's catches the ball pretty well. Fifth in yards created. On, on, with a with a pretty uh, low attempt total compared to some of the other guys, eighth in evaded tackles with fifty eight, thirteenth a juke rate. So he's he's got some of those other metrics that fit into uh, what people like to see from that community. I, I forget eighth, what was that eighth in uh, eighth in evaded tackles, but I think like eighteenth in attempts. So right, uh, well, so right. obviously with stating that the low the, the, the attempt juke total rate. was was low the on juke the first one. Top five, that goes with all those other ones and, and the fact that he's you know at eighth with evaded tackles of 58 and has a really low he's obviously been the one b to melvin gordon right now whether you agree or don't agree uh, that's just the, that's just straight facts um <laughs> in, in that situation um w- would i quite put him there no but the 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 age is appealing and um the situation should be fucking awesome. It's just not quite that offense should be so fucking good, but it's just not happening right now. Like there are weapons How is everywhere. How's it not so good? Judy's co- going to be around for a minute. Sutton's back. They signed Tim Patrick. Noah Fant's there. Like that offense is ready to explode. And if and if he can be the running back that's in there when that offense is exploding, and and whether he's the the main guy and the only guy, or even the one A is still gonna he's still gonna have tremendous va- fantasy value. So I don't know if he's quite. 
up there with the Najee and, and the Swift of the world just yet. Uh, but I, I can see it, and I think the the, the public is going to easily jump on uh, Javante over Najee. Um, so l- let's let's keep rolling then. If, uh, if if you guys haven't quite slotted him in, Christian McCaffrey, Javante over Christian McCaffrey. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, Robbie. No, I don't think so. And, and just to cut back real quick, go ahead. I, I think, like you're saying, that the I think consensus is going to look at the age, and they're really going to want to put Javante over because let, let's say he has a couple more good games, and you keep seeing Najee Harris with this low yards per carry, but he's still producing because he gets a touchdown or six catches, and they're going to say, you know, Najee's not it. Guess what, Javante is going to do without Melvin Gordon. And I guess I I just pump the brakes a little bit on the age because I don't think 21 or 22 versus 23, 24 really matters for running backs when they're that young, right? We're not worried about five, six years down the road. And so I don't want to look at those age and give Javante any more of a boost. What I think might, so I, I do have Najee above Javante still, but I think the only thing that would change it is if, what is that Broncos offense gets an Aaron Rodgers and, Pittsburgh struggles with another year, right? I think, I think honestly, what it comes down to is what is this, what are both these offenses going to look like a year from now? What's that quarterback situation in Pittsburgh? What's that quarterback situation in Denver? And that will do a a lot for me because I think both these guys are very capable of scoring double digit touchdowns. Mm -hmm. And, and that's going to be where maybe I slot one over the other is that, Hey, they get Aaron Rodgers locked up for two or three years. I'm really going to like that running back attached to him like because of that. what I've seen him do with Aaron Jones, right? We've seen Aaron Jones, a guy who doesn't get as many carries as what a 230-pound Najee Harris can get. You've seen Najee Harris on the catching side prove a lot of people wrong. They weren't sure about that catching ability. And, and so I'm excited about that, but it just really depends on what happens to the quarterback position. But Man, you're if just you taking them both. If you didn't see Najee Harris making back shoulder fades in the end zone for touchdowns from as a wide receiver, I don't know what you were looking at, but man. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you. No, you know you're right, but they, I think a lot of people just they hate him. They don't like don't, him. I don't they, know why they don't they, like him. A lot of people just don't watch the games as much as football as everyone takes in. They they just don't watch the games as much as because you only have so much time in a day. So what they do is they take the size. They say six one two thirty. It's it's Chase Edmonds. Do you guys know this year Chase Edmonds is one of the worst at, at pass catching when he's been healthy. Obviously, he's been out for a couple of, uh, of weeks. But one of the better running backs at pass catching has been James Conner. And and people are – you couldn't get anybody to agree preseason that Chase Edmonds is a worse – you know, James Conner is a better pass catcher because right. of their size, right? Everyone looks at that size and they say, no, this is what it is. Matt Forte, uh, you brought him up in the, in the last video, uh, Jay, and he's a guy that you you look at what he did from a pass catching standpoint. You're like, he's, he's going to be 5'10". 205 pounds no he's like 6'1 215 2 like he's not I think a lot of people don't watch as much as they would like to and so you get these stereotypes and anyways that, that was a tangent but I, I want to just say that I I don't want people to worry about Najee because he's the older rookie because you're not worrying about his age for four five six years and so don't let that be a deterrent because you see Javante age 21 I can have him for eight years you know uh I, I, that, that'd be my one caution, but yeah, getting Chris McCaffrey into the conversation, I'm kind of, I'm kind of with you. Uh, I, I think in that it, it's been two injuries and, and they are kind of these soft tissues, the hamstrings and things like that. So you're kind of, you know, worried about some of those, but he's just a different level of upside that I don't think we've seen in a player for, for a while. And, and so it, even if he does take a, he's not playing 90%, 95% of those snaps and he's playing 80%, 75%. I think how efficient he is, as well as the pass catching, especially let's say they get, they get an increase at quarterback, right? He's, he hasn't played with a, a really exceptional quarterback yet. Could that happen? Maybe. I just think, man, he, he is still at, at the level where he can be what Jonathan Taylor is doing and what CMC did for you in previous years. He can still get to that. It's just, people are going to, be down on him because he got injured back back years kind of like what happened with keenan allen what 2014 2015 where he got the lacerated kidney and then the acl back to back and people like nope he's done he's dead injury prone he's done and what has he done since just been a top 10 wide receiver yeah so that's yeah i mean we've we've seen it go both ways with those guys he's got a high usage rate and and maybe maybe it always just is going to be that way but I, i tend to agree uh, that I, I CMC is a guy I've said it before on the show that I'm I'm willing to ride 
into the grave. Like uh, we just talked about those older running backs a little while ago. Like if you would have thrown him on that list, I would have said him. It's him. I'm gonna ride. He's never leaving my team. We're riding it into the dirt. I, I I just I feel really good about him. Like you said, he's special. He's different. I'm bummed that we're getting robbed of not being able to watch him over the net last two years. And and anytime he gets on the field this year, he's is just absolutely ridiculous. Um, so uh, yeah, no, I, I, I can, I can agree with you there. I can get behind that. Um, how about Alvin Kamara? Yeah, I mean, that's probably the, the level where I'm starting to, to think about it because, um, while we, we said, you know, Kamara and Eckler have that, that pass catching ceiling as well. Javante, again, I, j- I just said kind of that stereotype of the size. Javante is not a guy that you think is that great pass catcher, but all he did at North Carolina, especially that past year, with Michael Carter was they were both fantastic out of the backfield. Yeah. And, and and then what does he do here with the Broncos? I think he had a stretch of five games with four catches in each game. Even and, just watching this so, last game, he made a couple of nice grabs, man, just that you yep. wouldn't expect the, like you said, the frame uh, and the way he plays to be as soft handed as he is. Yeah. 42 targets, 33 receptions, 269 yards, two touchdowns through the air. Nothing yep. to scoff at. That's fantastic. So I'm not worried about that in the way that I wouldn't worry about it with, uh, you know, you know, Zeke, Zeke had a couple of, uh, I think 76 reception seasons or uh, right around there uh, a couple of years like that. And you wouldn't expect that out of him either. And so that's where I kind of view, view Javante. So if I think he's a guy that has maybe the double digit touchdowns, or I know we saw that from Camara um, last year, obviously five touchdowns in one game will help that stat. But um, I think that age discrepancy now, when you're talking about 26 going on 27, I think, for Kamara versus mm-hmm. Javante. I think that might be my breaking point where I slide him in. Um, what about you guys? Um, I, 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 yeah, I'm fine with that. Um, I'm, I, I like that. I, I could definitely see that being the the point where I, I would slide him in. I could I could hear your conversation for Christian McCaffrey to that you'd want to slide him in above him. But I'm, like I said, I'm riding with Christian. Um, I guess real quick before we – Saquon Barkley, would you would you take Saquon Barkley over Alvin Kamara, and then so would you then just slot Javante Williams ahead of or behind Saquon Barkley? And Saquon is is just that conundrum right now because we haven't seen it for oh, we saw flashes um, when he came back. What was it, week three, week four, and, and then he got taken from us a little bit again. And so I'm, I, I really like Saquon, and I think he does return. Uh, to the form that he was maybe not the 2018 season where he, you know, breaks rookie records. Right. I think he had uh, nine 91 receptions or something crazy like that. But I do think once they can fix that offense, because you want to talk about bad offenses. I mean, that, that's one of the worst. I don't know how many giants games right. you guys have right. been that's, fortunate that's to watch, but what I was going to wrap offense, that up with yeah. fortunate. <laughs> <laughs> that, that offense is just, it, it's just really, really bad. And, and so, I'm going to stick with Saquon because I, I know what that upside is and I get it. You're, you're giving up years there, but, but, but Bar- Barkley, we're talking about, he's the same age. Uh, I don't have the graphic up in front of me, but he's right there at tw- 24, 24 um, heading into 25 uh, coming into next season. And, and I don't want to be the guy that pushes running backs out the door because they're a couple years older than another guy. Right. I don't want to be the guy that moves on from a Saquon. and says, you know, this Josh Jacobs, he was, you know, running back, 13 with only playing 13 games and he was running back eight the next year. And I'm not, this isn't a Josh Jacobs is bad thing. It's just his value is not where Barkley's value is. And I don't know if it gets there unless we really see him take off. Right. So I don't, I don't want to be the guy that takes that risk when I know what Saquon Barkley can be. And I'm not worried about age. Yeah. I I think, I think I would, I was, I asked, asked, answer that question because I think I would still go Saquon, then Javante, then Alvin Kamara. Um, so I, I, that's that's kind of why I, I wanted to throw that out there. Jay Wayne, you want to wrap this? You got you got him pushed down a little further? Man, what do you, what I do think you got? I got to take Javante. I mean, right. I, I, I love the idea of Saquon, and I've been in on him where you have to have taken him for the last however many years. But how long can we wait to see to get what we want? You know, like yeah. it's just it's always something with him. And, and, and we've talked about it with with. 
We've talked about it in the past with these athletic dudes that are just so twitchy, their soft tissues can't hang on, and maybe he bucks it. You know, maybe he bucks the trend and becomes the Saquon that we all know that he can be. But in a startup or whatever, I mean, I might just go with Javante, who I, I've he's been producing and and he he's probably you know he's looked awesome and and that offense looks not good but better than what the Giants are putting out and right I, it seems like they're gonna get a quarterback next year of some sort and not to say that New York couldn't attract one of nobody one of those wants big to go to the Giants it's still New York it's still the Giants like, yeah regardless of where and, they've been like it's still a fran like it's a storied franchise is one of the biggest markets ever like if the true. Giants paid enough and Russell Wilson went out there all of a sudden Saquon Barkley would be yeah yeah so exciting um, and he doesn't even need a, a Russell Wilson right like we saw him with Eli at the end of Eli's career and maybe that's where you make the argument that it's a bunch of dump offs but he also ran really well and and everybody knew it's it was kind of like what Big Ben is right now where everybody knows it's going to be short dink and dunks. It's going to be some bad fly balls to chase Claypool. That's what it was with Eli Manning, right? Like everybody knew it's going to be dink and dunks. Everyone knew that they could stack the box and Saquon still balled. And I get it. That was yesteryear. That was 2018. Right. Mm -hmm. But well, even to your credit, Robbie, I mean, he, he came back after being hurt earlier in the year and then like, I forget what game it was, but he, like, put the team on his shoulders. Like, he scored a 75-yard touchdown catch to win the game or something like that. And after having just scored to keep him in it, and you could just – you could just tell that they – that whole – a team can can cling to Saquon and he can carry a team. But, like, I'm not doubting his talent or his ability – it's just, can he stay healthy? And, and and I'm not out on him. I'm not saying sell Saquon. I'm not saying I won't take him. But if you're posing, if you're putting Javante right there in front of me and I can kind of reset Saquon to Javante and, you know, Saquon's value is probably going down because of this injury history and Javante, like we've been saying, is just going up. So I think I would probably personally take Javante, but. Okay. Well, it yeah. seems like that's a, that's a, that's kind of where we kind of stacked up and, and we're, not even through the whole season yet. We're just kind of having some fun here. By the time midseason rolls around, all of us may feel differently. Jay Wayne, you might feel like, hey, I let me get Saquon, and we might be like, oh, we saw enough from Javante to say, hey, Javante's at the top for us. But that's that's why it's a it's a fun time to have this conversation. We wanted to talk about it because everyone's talking about it, Javante. That's why rankings um, suck in general because it's yeah. like so much context needed and so much fluctuates and value fluctuates, you know, that's really what it's about. It's not like if I would take this guy over that guy, it's like, will one of them follow well, me and, a little bit later? And, and you know? I think, I think that's going to be, that's really when you get down to it. The big question is, is I think Javante, like I said, is going to be up at the top in that first, I think he's gonna be a first round fucking startup player because of the age and because of what we're seeing and because of all the hype. As soon as and, the season's over and, and Melvin's Barkley not on the is team. is going to be the first time where his value is obtainable, and that's going to be really attractive to me, whereas I'm not so sure that I'd be wanting to pounce on Javante necessarily. Um, I'm not saying that I wouldn't do it, and maybe on in January or in June, I'm like, fuck yeah, I'll take Javante. Uh, i, I got to see how where all these values play out. Through the offseason, that's why keeping track of ADP and keep, keep even mock drafts to see where everybody's value is is super important because it's not necessarily about the rankings and the player. and the, It's about where they have to go and where you have to take them and where right. you feel comfortable taking them. And like you said, I mean, I might not even have to be posed with the situation of taking Javante or Saquon because Javante's probably gone at that point. And yeah. I can just get Saquon. So, Final thoughts, uh, Mr. Jeffries? Yeah, I, I think we're going to see, like you're saying, Javante get to a level where you might be thinking the the other route. You might be thinking, what can I get in addition to, I think, a player that we haven't mentioned yet, but a guy that I think we have in this discussion, at least I do, uh, from a running back ranking standpoint. Can I get him and, and maybe another piece to go for a championship team that's winning right now? Would you part with the young, alluring, up-and-coming Javante I think that's the the question that we'll get to once his his level reaches a, a certain point this offseason. So uh, we can transition and, and see if we hit on that player. Okay, that's a good place to put a bow on it. All right.